So the first thing you'll notice when you come in the garden gate is that these irises are blooming. I planted these, I think, late in 2019. They did not bloom last year, but this year was their first year. So that's exciting. These are both from Jung Seeds. This is Immortal or Immortel, I can't really remember. And this is Ziggy. They are both lightly scented. The Ziggy has a stronger scent, but it's not overpowering. If I'm standing at the garden gate and the wind is blowing this way, I'll get just a little hint of the smell, but otherwise you have to come in close. These are a few days old now, so they're not quite as bright colored as they were to start out with, but when they first open, it's a really bright yellow. I mean, they're just gorgeous even still now. I'm obsessed. Second sowing of radishes are coming up. They have not been decimated by the squirrels yet. And my second sowing of carrots came up. Although I did the same thing I did the first time and I forgot to dig out my bed first. So I still may end up with stunted carrots. Asparagus is looking good. I really need to get more mulch down in this path because it's getting taken over by grass again, but we're out of mulch. So that has to wait. I do have one little asparagus right here that I need to dig up and transplant into the beds. But if you remember from previous years, the asparagus bed was a square. So this pathway was part of it last year and I had dug them up and transplanted them last fall. I kind of assumed I would have missed a few and it looks like I only missed one. So that is not too bad. I have my herbs in. I have sage, parsley, rosemary, oregano, more parsley. This is cilantro that self seeds. And this is my perennial thyme that I love. It's everywhere here. I have some zinnias that popped up. Looking fabulous. I went around the garden on Saturday and I just sprinkled flower seeds everywhere. <laughs> so if they all pop up, which they should because it's been raining a lot, it's going to be magical. This clematis finally bloomed. It did not bloom last year because the horses nipped the buds off and I think it just got angry and it didn't really grow last year. This year it looks great. The horses haven't touched it. It's kind of freaky looking, but I like it. It's okay. And then this is another clematis that I had grabbed on clearance last year. Its roots were totally dried out, so I wasn't even sure that it was going to live, but it lived, and it looks like I might get a bloom from it. It's either a dark blue or dark purple. I can't remember, so we will stay tuned. This is going to be spiderwort. It'll be opening soon. These are some purple iris that I got from my mom. There's some bee balm. This is kind of a weed, but it has like a weird little white flower. I leave it. I got my dahlias planted in all my pots. They're not really coming up yet. Some of them are that were sprouted pretty good. These bigger pots have two sets of tubers each and some of the smaller ones just have one set of tubers. I also had a packet of dahlia seeds from Baker Creek. It was a year or two old. I dumped the seeds in here and then on the other side of the pots. So we'll see if any of those grow. If they don't, it's not the end of the world, but it obviously would be really cool if they did. I have a whole bunch of iris. I can't remember what kind. Of <clears throat> Sorry. I can't remember what kind this is, but I got grabbed them at Walmart. There was, I think, 50 of them, so I did 25 here and 20 in another spot, or maybe there was 40. I can't remember, but I split them up. More zinnia seeds. Here's some cosmos that are going to be coming up. I also did zinnias at each corner around the rhubarb. Oh, I see a rhubarb flower I need to pick off. Kale is coming up looking all right. And then I planted a robe Swiss chard between the kale and the rhubarb. We'll see what happens with it. I've had terrible luck with Swiss chard where I get nothing. So raspberries are flowering. So I will have raspberries soon. That was not supposed to be in here this year, but the trees are still here as you can see. 
So the raspberries are still here because my orchard has not been cleared. I have two summer squash and two zucchini that I got from my mom. Strawberries have been flowering like crazy. Garlic over there looks good. Here is my onions doing fabulous. Still a little, a few little pieces of garlic in there that I missed last year, but that's fine. So this area that was expanded into last year has been my biggest <laughs> problem. You know I did that like third of it already. This chunk I didn't do because we were supposed to be bringing the base of my greenhouse in here and I was hoping to borrow the neighbor's tractor to bring in some of my topsoil. Well, I wasn't going to do any of that until the trees were cleared and yada yada yada. So now I'm doing it all by hand with the wheelbarrow. I'm going to try and get a bed done for the corn today and then either tomorrow or the next day get the bed done for the melons. It's really hard. My topsoil pile's been here for three years so it's like rock hard cement. So even getting it which it's way out over there. <laughs> Getting it scooped into the wheelbarrow to bring over here is a lot of work. So it's a process. This is a pumpkin I got from my mom. And then I did put two, I think, winter luxury pumpkin seeds in here. Have not sprouted yet, we'll see. These, I got um, seed potatoes from my mom. They're all in here. So far this bag is the only one that has sprouted anything. These ones haven't done much yet, but that's okay. And then I have my cucamelon starts. I ended up with, I think, four or five that survived the second planting of ones I did inside. And then I only get about 16 cucamelon seeds in a packet. So I planted the rest of the seeds around these trellises, which they've done nothing so far. But I do remember from the last time I direct sowed them outside, they take forever to sprout. I have marigold seeds in these three, and there's chrysanthemum in here. Those are my elderberry starts that I'm waiting on. This plum has green bark if you scratch it. Supposedly still alive, though it's not doing anything, so we'll see. This plum is definitely dead, so I'm going to have to take it back at some point. The gooseberry tree is happy. The fig tree... Didn't like it when we got a cold night and the leaves died off. And now I'm not sure if it's alive or dead, but it was $7, so I'm just letting it sit. Here are where all of my tomatoes. So I have tomatoes and then basil on the outside and then peppers on the inside. I did have a cutworm come through here and nip off the peppers in this one. And in this one, which they were sweet banana peppers for my daughter. So I will have to buy some replacements for that. But I don't know if the worm got eaten, hopefully. Because <laughs> it hasn't come back for anything else. I was going to sprinkle dyed tomatoes earth down to kill it. But it's been raining so much it would have been basically useless. These are my little teeny tiny tomatoes. These are the atomic grape tomatoes that I had started inside. They've actually grown a lot since I planted them out here. Still very small, but a lot better. In this bed, I did like green beans and cucumbers. And then along the back is ground cherries for my daughter. This is another one of the beds with tomatoes, basil, peppers, tomatoes, basil, peppers. Lots of those. I think I have 18, tomatoes and well 16 peppers since two of mine got eaten but I'll replace those. I did this entire back stretch with all of my gladiola bulbs that I had stored over winter. There's probably a couple hundred that are a decent size and will flower this year and a ton of little teeny tiny chromers. Chrom I don't know how to say it. It's a bulb, but they call it something different. The little babies <laughs> that come off the gladiolas. Tons of those in here. Thousands. Some of them probably won't live. The ones that do live are not big enough that they will flower this year. I'm just hoping they get bigger so that I can pull them and store them. Maybe in the next year or two, those ones will be big enough to produce flowers. Because ideally, I think I would like to have a cut flower garden. 
elsewhere eventually. And then I can leave the ones in the garden for the aesthetics. And then I can have one somewhere else for cutting and bringing in the house or selling or whatever. Over here I have some mint, some dill, some more parsley, less borage. I moved in some chives. Lots of cosmos coming up again. And then I planted my sunflowers along this row like I did last year. And then this gives you a good look <laughs> at the hot mess that is going to be <laughs> my corn and melon beds. These are where they were last year. I know you're supposed to rotate a little bit. They were supposed to go over here if this area would have been prepped with the trees down, but that not being down is really just screwed up everything. So I'm not gonna weed this. I don't have time. I don't have the energy. I'm just gonna bring in topsoil and fill up. You can kind of see a square here and then there'll be a path down the middle and a square there. Corn I'm gonna do first because it takes the longest to grow. Melons I'll do next because I'm not direct seeding melons this year because I'm so far behind. I'm just going to buy a few starts and call it good. So my bee balm's coming up, lavender's returning, mixed colored yarrow's coming back. There's not a lot going on in this row because it's a few lilies that I had planted last year. The tulips are finally done. And then the iris that my mom gave me, there's several hundred of those which won't bloom this year that'll be another year or two but I did go and sprinkle seeds through like I said in here I did I might have done cosmos but then I couldn't remember if I put cosmos in here or not so then I came back and I put in African daisies so <laughs> we'll see what pops up in here it could be a mix in this one I absolutely loaded this guy with nasturtium I mean you can see a good amount of them peeking through right now but it's it's loaded and my hope is that they'll kind of trellis down and look cool the birds sound so pretty right now they're so happy in the morning so in here I have Brussels sprouts that I started from seed which are just coming up a little bit and then I have Brussels sprouts that I bought that are way ahead of mine for, you know, multiple harvests of it. I just planted my climbing beans and bush beans on Sunday, so those are not ready yet, obviously, but they're in there. Not a lot going on in here. Most of these are summer blooming flowers. I did throw some seeds. Here's that other patch of the new irises I planted. Subbed my toe. <laughs> I do have some milkweed in here. I've been trying to transfer a spot in here for the butterflies. And then my little shade garden. You can see it gets a nice amount of sun in the morning. And I filled up my hummingbird feeders, which they have been visiting. Oh, that sun is so bright right now. My bleeding hearts, my pink bleeding hearts have bloomed. So cute. And then over here, my broccoli that I got from my mother-in-law is doing good. And then my peas are growing up. I kind of guessed this was going to be a problem that these were too thick for the peas to hold on to. But I just wanted to test it out and see But they're having a hard time wrapping around it. So I think what I'm going to do is just get a piece of baling twine and run it along the bottom. And then they can hold on to that easy enough. And then I have spinach and lettuce. And then I planted some kohlrabi in there because I got free kohlrabi seed. This entire bed right here is kind of cockeyed. It's not straight. The front of it is all my Dahlia tubers that I overwintered. The only one that's up right now, again, is one that was way ahead of everybody else. And then the back I did with tons of zinnias. These are my little mulberries that have been here forever, waiting for a new permanent home. I do need to get cabbages yet, and they'll go on the other side of the rhubarb. These sweet peas are doing good. Got the passion flower planted, and it does look like it wants to bloom here at some point. I have no idea how long they take. I 
I've never had them before. And let's see what's over here. In here, I planted, look at Logan just mowed this a few days ago. That's how much it's been raining. The grass is insane. But in here I planted hollyhock seeds. I don't know if those are what hollyhock seedlings look like or if that's just a weed. <laughs> Who knows? Peonies are coming up and looking good. I have this one peony plant is going to bloom here and then it looks like down there and nowhere else. But that's okay. Again, I'll just kind of filling in with perennials. This is starting to get really nice and lush. So I have delphinium and I did some delphinium seeds and I did some dianthus seeds in here. So we'll see how this kind of fills in and see there's like, what is that? It could be cosmos that I sprinkled in. It could be grass. Who knows? <laughs> Time will tell. But, so we got, this is a tall phlox, this is more spiderwort, that's more lamium. Forget what that thing's called, it's name takes right there. Here's more of the thyme. This, okay, I was told that this is St. John's wort. It does have a yellow flower late in the summer, but this also pops up randomly around the property, so... Anybody that knows St. John's wort, is this St. John's wort or is this just a weed that has a yellow flower? I have no idea. No idea. Here's more zinnia seeds. I really love that little section of it though. It's just, oh, thank you, bug. So flushed out and full. Even though there's not a lot of flowers right now, it's so green and bushy and that's how I want all of the edges to look. Oh, spider on my finger. No, thank you. That's the one bad thing walking through here right now. The spider web zigzag everywhere. Spiders everywhere. There's a gross spider, too. <laughs> Honestly, you guys are lucky I didn't just scream really loudly because I do not like spiders at all. Although I freak out more if I think they're in my hair. <laughs> um, I think I planted a tall blocks that I got from Florette Farms right there. Oh, there it is. It won't leave me alone, guys. Did you see it on my arm? Ew. Go away, Spidey. <laughs> You're not my friend. You look yucky. Okay. Continuing to wipe my arm off, hoping that the spider is gone. <laughs> Disgusting. And this is my comfrey is blooming and the bees love the comfrey. It doesn't last very long. The flowers, the bees come through, the flowers fall off, the plants fall over and it looks like a big dead hot mess. I chop it all back, spread the leaves around because they're full of nutrients and then it'll come up for a second time. Now here, I kind of weeded it was all violas or wild violet. So I weeded it and I put my okra in here. I had okra in that expansion area around where the tomatoes are last year. It just didn't get enough sun. It was really stunted. I wanted to give it a more prominent sunny location this year. It's not sunny right now, but I promise it is sunny basically the rest of the day. And obviously the chives are very happy and a big hit with the bees. And they self seed like crazy so I try to pick off as many seeds as I can seed heads to stop them from spreading everywhere but I mean I just have chives pop it all over but that's how the garden looks today not where I wanted to be with it because that tree is supposed to be gone that area is supposed to be in it the greenhouse is supposed to be in it at this point even if they get the tree down in the next month, I'm not going to worry about moving the fence line until fall because the clematis has grown all over the fence and I don't want to rip it down. So the garden is staying exactly the size and shape that it is right now until fall. And then hopefully in fall, when everything has died back, we can move in the greenhouse and build it and move the fencing around. 
and prep the soil because I do like to do a fall prep as well so that it will be ready to go in the spring and I will have a greenhouse next year. But this is it. It's crazy looking, but I love it. <laughs> And I guess that's it. I will probably do another garden tour in a week or two. Hope you guys like this one.